Hello, everyone. If you recall, uh, last time we introduced uh, average and reactive power in sinusoidal signals. And uh, the definition goes like this. It's the, for the average power, you take the maximum voltage times the maximum current divided by 2 multiplied by cosine of the phase difference. And we actually call the cosine of the phase difference uh, power factor. And then we define reactive power as uh, maximum voltage, maximum current divided by 2 times the sine of the phase difference. Now, there was a reason why we called these two uh, the names. The, the name actually carries some information. The average power is the component of the power that is uh, actually transformed from electrical domain to non-electrical domain. And in other words, uh, it's consumed by the component and will not go back into the electrical domain. Whereas the uh, reactive power was the portion of the energy or the power that is not consumed and is not going to leave in the electrical domain and rather is going to be conserved in, in, the, in the form of potential energy or kinetic energy, in other words, in, in the form of a charge or electric field in the case of a capacitor or in the form of a current or the movement of electrons uh, or magnetic field in the case of an inductor and it would actually come back to the circuit alternatingly with a frequency twice uh, as much as the voltage or the current in that case. So that's why we called it reactive power that uh, is associated with reactive components. If you recall, the capacitor and the inductors would be uh, called reactive components um, in, uh, as, as, uh, as opposed to resistor. And the basic functionality of a reactive component is that it takes the energy and it conserves it in, uh, in, a, in the form of potential or kinetic energy. And that energy could come back uh, to the circuit. Okay, that said, now uh, this time uh, in, uh, in today's uh, lecture, we're going to try and see how we can do uh, this kind of a calculation in the phasor domain using complex numbers, and whether or not that's, uh, that's going to add any uh, simplicity or help with the calculations. So let's actually take these two uh, signals and move them into their phasor uh, domain e uh, equivalent. So uh, the phasor transformation uh, on the voltage and the current here uh, would give us uh, Vm uh, e to the j theta v. So as you can see, the information for uh, in information uh, about the amplitude and the phase is conserved and time domain dependency is gone. And the same thing for the current. Now, I'm going to suggest uh, a certain uh, way of calculating or manipulating these two numbers, these two phases, that in a minute you're going to see the rationale behind it. And that's to take the voltage, the phasor voltage, and multiply that uh, by the current phasor, but the conjugate of the current phasor. And you will see why we're doing this specific calculation uh, momentarily. Uh, but before that, let's actually re recall what, the, uh, what it takes to do a conjugate of a complex number. So if C uh, is a complex number in the form of A plus Bj, then conjugate of C is A minus Bj. Now if you sh take this and uh, basically uh, look at the phasor domain equivalent of a, a number, so let's say C the complex number is something like uh, amplitude e to the j uh, theta, generally. So if I take this and write it in that format, c would be um, a cosine theta plus a sine theta j, right? So this is my uh, a and that's my b. So if I take these two and conjugate, uh, this number, that would be a cosine theta minus a sine theta j. Now if I take this and go back to that domain of uh, showing this number in that form, 
I can do this. I can say that this thing is the same as A, E, J minus theta. Sorry, minus theta. Right? Because cosine of minus theta is actually the same as cosine of theta, and sine of minus theta is minus sine of theta. So conjugate of this number is the same as just taking that angle up here and negate that. Okay, so in other words, when I want to conjugate the current here, all I need to do is to take this and then uh, turn it into I m e j minus theta i. So let's do that. So we take these two, so one half of v m e j theta v, and then the conjugate of the current would be I m e minus j theta i. So now these two would be one half v m i m e j theta v minus theta i. Right? So if I actually turn this number now into this format, this would be one half v m i m cosine of theta v minus theta i plus sine, what, sorry, one half of v m i m sine of theta v minus theta is theta i j. So let, let's look at this. This, what we calculate, actually ended up giving us p, the average power, plus q, the reactive power, times j. So if you basically take the phasor of the voltage and multiply that by the conjugate of the phasor of the current, it will give you a complex number. The real component of that com uh, complex number would be the average power, the component of the power that is actually turning into heat or non-electric domain energy uh, or power, and the imaginary part of that complex number is going to end, end up gi giving you the reactive power. So now this is actually pretty interesting um, in, a, in a sense that if you already have access to the phasor uh, of the voltage and the phasor of the current, you just take uh, the conjugate of one and multiply it by the other, and the conjugate of current and multiply it by the conjugate of voltage, and uh, divided by half, you both get the uh, average power and the reactive power by separating the real component of that calculation from the imaginary component of that calculation. So let me correct this. This, this that's Q times J. So the reactive component would be the imaginary part of that calculation. Now beyond that, we also uh, have to define uh, this value as. Uh, so we're going to define something new. We, we're going to call this S and uh, and this is called the complex power uh, for obvious reason. Uh, it's a complex number. But then we can actually calculate the magnitude of this complex uh, value. And that, as you can know, the magnitude of any complex value is the square root of the real component uh, plus the to the power of 2 plus the imaginary component to the power of 2. So it would be a square root of p to the power of 2 plus q to the power of 2. And this actually has a name. It's called the apparent power. So if you ever hear these terms, this is what it means. So we can quickly test this or basically try this on a, a quick, simple example. So let's say we know that the voltage, the phasor voltage in a situation is, I don't know, 100 volts uh, with a phase of 15 degrees. And then it's uh, the phasor of the current is 5 
uh, with a phase of minus 105 degrees. Now, if you want to calculate the average and the reactive uh, power, you take this and multiply it by the phasor of the current, but uh, conjugate of that with a negative sign, which would be one half uh, times 100 e to the j15 times 5 e to the minus j minus 105, which ends up being 105. So this would be 100 times 5, uh, 500 divided by 2, 250 e to the j 120 degrees. Now, so the real component of the power, uh, or T, or the average power, the power that is actually being consumed, is 250 cosine of 120. And the reactive component would be 250 sine of 120. And that's done. So this is how much, in that specific case, uh, how much of the power or the energy that is actually being consumed or leaving the uh, energy, the electrical domain, and is the part that is being conserved. So the last thing that I want to mention here is to represent the same equations in an alternative fashion, uh, assuming that we, instead of having the phasor of the voltage and current, we only have access to the phasor of one of the two, and uh, then we know what the impedance of the load is. So uh, if you recall for the case of time domain, we did calculate uh, the, the, the power to be voltage times current, but also we said since voltage uh, is equal to uh, resistance times current, um, and uh, let me actually write that here instead of this example. I'm going to quickly do that. So in the time domain, we said if we know uh, that we are dealing with a resistive load, the power uh, we define as voltage times current, but then if the voltage is, for example, uh, resistance times a current, then it, the power would be the resistance times the current to the power of 2, right? Alternatively, you can write the current as a function of voltage divided by the resistance, so that would be voltage divided by voltage divided by the resistance, and that would be voltage to the power of 2 divided by the resistance. So alternatingly, you can calculate and the power uh, consumed in the resistance by the resistance multiplied by the current to the power of 2 or the voltage to the power of 2 divided by the resistance. You can do the same thing now in the uh, general form and the assuming that the load is not necessarily resistive, we define the concept of an impedance, right? And now you can do the same in this domain with the phasers and this time when you calculate this uh, value, we know that uh, you can write the voltage in the case of an impedance in the form of uh, basically uh, the impedance uh, times uh, the current uh, in the, f the phasor of the current and then that multiplied by the phasor conjugate. Um, so this is the same as the voltage phasor of the voltage and the whole thing divided by 2, so one half of this. So this would be one half uh, I times conjugate of I. Now the interesting thing here times Z, sorry, so this is times Z I times conjugate of I and the interesting here thing here is that the current uh, times the conjugate of the current is actually equal to the magnitude of the current or amplitude of the current to the power of 2. So you can then, uh, because we know what the amplitude of current is, we can rewrite this in the form of I uh, 1 half Z I max to the power of 2. Well, altern alternatively, you can actually show that you can write the same thing as V max to the power of 2 divided by 2Z. So, 
uh, if if you have uh, the uh, phase access to the phase of the voltage or the phase of the current and the impedance of the load, then you can uh, calculate the power using one of these two. Uh, and what, once you do that, um, what's uh, actually going to give you the information about the phase is going to come from the impedance rather than the phaser of the current or the phaser of the voltage because this component is actually just the real number. So the imaginary component is uh, which uh, contains the phase information uh, is, is now within the impedance uh, rather than being in the voltage or the current. Uh, with that, I'm going to stop, and next time we're going to come uh, back and discuss the last uh, portion uh, uh, on, the, on the power calculation and consider conditions for maximum power delivery. Thank you.